I greet you all in the name of Christ and wish upon you the peace and the blessings of God. It's a real pleasure to share with you this evening. I was invited for this service uh, in an email from Janet Nielsen about 18 months ago. <laughs> I think. And, and then uh, Pam Cram has been leading us in our worship uh, liaised with me to finalise the arrangement. So thank you. you. You are the ones who asked to take responsibility for me being here. And I was last here 21 years ago. I came and took a service here. Uh, that was before City of Sanctuary was born. Uh, but I was, I was wrestling with the kernel of the ideas out of which it emerged. And um, uh, well, um, here we are now, and I want to thank the circuit for your kind hospitality to me and to my wife Kathy for this weekend, and also I want to thank Alan and Marilyn for uh, your hospitality to us last night with a lovely meal, and uh, Ken and Julia, lovely lunch today. Where are you all? And uh, Slovak. <laughs> Never. At, we met also um, at lunch, and that was lovely. Swansea became the second city of sanctuary um, in the UK, and the first in Wales in 2010. So just three years after Sheffield became UK's first city of sanctuary. It's great to be here, and Lord Mayor, High Commissioner, and councillors and all you other guests um, in, in the service today. Thank you for making the time and the effort for being here. I'm sure you could be in about three other places <laughs> this evening, but you've chosen to be with us here today and we feel very privileged. And I am delighted that the Welsh Refugee Coalition along with individuals and organisations, community groups throughout Wales are now calling on Wales to become the first nation of sanctuary. The coalition is building on the work of City of Sanctuary movement which exists in the UK and Ireland and also building on lessons which have been learned by existing City of Sanctuary groups in Wales. There's a huge number of them now, Swansea, Cardiff, Croeser, Tafey, Hay, Brecon and Telgarth, Wrexham and Neath, Port Talbot to mention a few. It, it started um, some years ago when I was invited by the ecumenical instrument in Wales called Kateen, um, led by Alan, um, Alan Edwards and uh, he invited me to come and speak with church leaders about City of Sanctuary and they took it upon themselves to begin to look at encouraging churches to support the whole network and from that, through him particularly, um, this whole idea of nation of sanctuary began to develop. While people across Wales have been responding to the ongoing refugee crisis in towns and villages across the country, setting up schemes of support and welcome and there is a clear commitment here, I can see, to ensure this outpouring of welcome will continue and grow to make Wales the first nation of sanctuary. Well, you are giving a great lead, and well done, and thank you. And we were given a very positive and colourful image of Swansea City of Sanctuary yesterday, and today we saw the sanctuary taken by Slatmina there from Ukraine in the home of uh, Ken and Julian. Well, thank you, Wales. It is an utter scandal that the UK government is openly building a hostile environment towards people seeking sanctuary and refuge. In a world blighted with hatred, we hold up a vision of a world that is defined by hospitality. Eighty years ago, Britain welcomed 10,000 children from Germany 
Jewish refugees, and we applaud that. Today, there are 10,000 children in Britain, unaccompanied, who have come here from other countries, many of them arriving here by dangerous routes, unaccompanied, and traveling by unsafe routes. And we deplore that, and we look to move the world on a bit. Our response to the hostile environment is to strengthen resolve and action to build cultures of welcome, hospitality, and safety. Challenge inhumanity with humanity. Challenge hostility with hospitality. That is the way to build hope and a better future for all. The task and the path is clear. Sustaining the work is demanding and tiring. But as we read in scripture, let us not grow weary in doing what is right. Let us work for the good of all. Our scripture readings today, in which we seek to discern the will and the way and the word of God, underline the struggle which is involved in the striving for justice. It is a challenging pursuit. R Jacob wrestles all night, not even knowing who he's he is wrestling with, and a struggle that leaves him limping. And that's the result of struggle and challenge, that it leaves you uh, drained. And the woman in the story from the New Testament, the woman in Jesus' parable, refuses to stop in her struggle for justice. He goes back again and again and again to the lawyer with the plea, grant me justice. And you talk to anybody here who is seeking asylum and sanctuary and they will tell you that's their story. It's a long, long process. There is uh, somebody I know in Sheffield who is just going through this process and it's just so drawn out. And part of the strategy sometimes, I think, is to make you think, oh, I think I'll just go away from here. But I always say to people, don't give up. Stand firm. Keep pleading for justice. That is our constant plea and prayer. Grant me justice. I want to specifically address churches in the work for justice. I want to challenge Sketi United Church to become officially recognized as a church of sanctuary. I'd like the whole circuit to be a circuit of sanctuary. You're already doing the work. You should get the official recognition and give a lead to others. The Methodist Church is, an, is on a journey um, to be a church of justice. What does that mean? What does it mean uh, to be a church of justice in relation to people seeking sanctuary. Well, one way churches can engage meaningfully with refugees is by taking up the idea of becoming churches of sanctuary. A church of sanctuary will respond to refugees with welcome, hospitality, and safety. In a church of sanctuary, members of the congregation will inform opinion on the basis of facts, not fiction and embed a culture of welcome and hospitality in the whole of the congregation and not leave it to one or two people with a bit of a passion and make sure our worship and prayer are saturated with the theme of welcome and hospitality and then do this loud and proud as an encouragement and inspiration to others. A church of sanctuary will make the effort to do what you are doing, what we were doing here earlier today, to listen to the voices of refugees and to celebrate the contributions they are, they are making. I am currently working with churches together in Britain and Ireland to develop and promote the idea of Church of Sanctuary. I've written a book about it. There's a copy available for anybody who wants it. Hospitality and Sanctuary for All. And alongside the Church of Sanctuary, Churches together in Britain and Ireland 
has worked with the Refugee Council and with the City of Sanctuary Network nationally to establish an annual Sanctuary Sunday, which is the Sunday at the end of Refugee Week. Sanctuary Sunday is an annual moment to call us back and to recommit ourselves to ensure that our work with refugees and people seeking sanctuary is rooted in our worship and prayer and engages our whole congregation. I'm wearing this rope, which is really now my stole. A stole that clergy wear is a symbol of the yoke of Christ, the cross of Christ, if you like, around the neck. I picked up this rope from a broken refugee boat that came to grief off the coast of Lampedusa, which is a tiny piece of rock in the Mediterranean. And if you go up north from Tunisia in North Africa, it's the first piece of Europe you come to. Well, a boat came to grief there, 2013. All the people on the boat drowned and bodies started to wash onto the shore and people on the island thought there's something um, that's tragic that's happened here. Well, since then, considerably more people have drowned like that. And if you went to Lampedusa, on the island, there is a space just off the coast which is called the Boat Cemetery. There are dozens of boats there. And I got there early uh, enough in the, the history to board the original boat and to pick up this rope. And also, um, a bit of wood from which I made a cross, which is there on the table. You can come and have a look at it later. And I picked up a sock. And um, this sock, OK, it says on it, sport. Who was wearing this sock? Teenager? Whoever it was, big, big feet, but what's the story? Where is that person? What story would this sock tell us if it could speak? And what stories would this rope tell if it could speak to us now? Ukrainian refugees can come to the UK through safe routes and without resorting to unseaworthy vessels. That's good. That's how it should be for people seeking sanctuary. We need to ensure the same humanitarian safe routes are made available for all refugees. Whatever their country of origin, be it Afghanistan, Syria, Ukraine, or Yemen. All refugees should be treated equally. People fleeing danger need sanctuary, safety. So, what's the process for being a church of sanctuary and why is this important? The concept of sanctuary is deeply rooted in scripture. And when I looked at my journal, and looked at what I preached about 21 years ago. Well, my text was, you shall also love the stranger. That verse is repeated 37 times in the Bible. The reason why it's repeated so much is because that's what needs to be done. And it's because they had to be told again and again and again because it is a difficult thing to do. But sanctuary or hospitality with safety so is a long-standing prophetic theme in Hebrew and Christian scriptures, the foundation of which is in the law books of the Hebrew scriptures and echoed in Jesus' teaching about how we treat the neighbor, how we treat the outsider. And in his story of the Good Samaritan, it is the stranger who does the healing, who brings the goodness, who sets an example on how to behave. And God 
according to the Hebrew scriptures, it is God who said to Moses, set up six cities of refuge so that people whose lives are in danger may find safety. And if God is the one who is making the demand, then something needs to, to be done. It is in this wisdom that we find the roots of the contemporary City of Sanctuary network. So Church of Sanctuary is a commitment to ensure congregations go out of their way intentionally to ensure people seeking uh, sanctuary, refugees and other isolated and vulnerable people are kept connected. Because the worst thing that can happen to you when you've lost your home is that you lose your family and you're disconnected from your roots and you're on your own and on the edges of society. So it's about connecting with people. And it's a good Methodist word, connection. We connect people and make sure they have access to support and protection. So make your place a place uh, of sanctuary, your place of worship a sanctuary where all are treated with warm welcome, generous hospitality and protection from harm. Every church is already a sanctuary. There is a space in every church which is called sanctuary. Here it is. And sanctuary is that space which should be the safest place on earth, where all feudal conflict ends, where at the table all are welcome and all are included. The Christian symbol of what I'm talking about is Holy Communion, a revelation of the world as it is meant to be, as well as a foretaste of the heavenly banquet, where all are welcome and valued equally, where no one is excluded, no one is made to feel like an outsider, a true sign of the kingdom of God. Noel, sitting there on the back row, Noel and I, 40 years ago, Noel, when we were young, <laughs> we went to a World Council of Churches Assembly in Melbourne. And um, one of the other delegates, Ralph uh, Morton, who went with us, well, he didn't go with us, but who gave us some training before we went, he said, whatever you're doing, always ask yourself, is this a sign of the kingdom? Is this a sign of the kingdom? And I've never forgotten that. Well, for me, communion, holy communion, represents what kingdom of God actually means. So I want to place the Church of Sanctuary movement in the context of the City of Sanctuary movement, which itself is a movement within a movement around work with people who are seeking sanctuary. City of Sanctuary was founded in the year 2005 on the 18th of June, Lord Mayor, 2007, just two years after we initiated it, the Lord Mayor of Sheffield came onto the steps of the town hall and declared Sheffield UK's first city of sanctuary with almost unanimous uh, resolution from a, a good local council with a diverse set of politicians there. Well, three years later, Swansea became the second city of sanctuary and then it really took off. By June 2022 there were over a hundred cities, towns, boroughs, areas in Britain and Ireland working with the city of sanctuary vision to build cultures of welcome and hospitality. And this vision has been taken up also to develop schools of sanctuary maternity wards of sanctuary, universities of sanctuary, libraries of sanctuary, theatres of sanctuary, gardens of sanctuary, and so on. While the governments, while the world governments struggle to find humanitarian responses to the current refugee crisis, the welcome, generosity and hospitality reflected in grassroots initiatives like City of Sanctuary movement offers hope and offers one way ahead in which people at local level 
can engage and express um, their politics non-violently and in an inclusive way. According to the United Nations Human uh, High Commissioner for Refugees, there are now 100 million refugees. That number has been surpassed in the world. It's nothing for us to take pride in. It's a scandalous number. But 90% of them are from a country that is in or close to conflict, like people from Ukraine. And almost 90% of the world's refugees are either trapped in their own countries or just go next door to the neighboring country. So most of the world's refugees are looked after by some of the poorest countries in the world. The UK Borders and Nationality Bill of 2021 is a monstrous response to a human catastrophe. It's outrageous that that's what we should come up with and say, well, let's send them to Rwanda. As if that would stop people coming here uh, seeking safety. When people's lives are in danger, nothing is going to stop them seeking Thank you. You ask anybody here who is in that situation. You can't fix a broken system with a broken thread. The next 20 or 30 years will see huge movements of people as a result of environmental degradation, climate change, famine, war, and persecution. It is a sign of our times. It alerts us to the fact that something is not right and requires our most serious attention. Why are people moving? What are the stories of people who leave their countries and cross borders to go somewhere else? As somebody said to me, when the water of the sea is safer than your country, we'll put ourselves and our children on that boat whatever the risks are involved, to find sanctuary elsewhere. People will continue to travel from many countries and contexts, overcoming obstacles like walls, frontiers, borders, mountains, and waters in search of safety and well-being. Long term, long term, you ask anybody from uh, Ukraine, Syria, and any country in conflict. Long term, this will only stop when the wars stop. So, what's the challenge for the nations? Stop making weapons. Stop making war. And instead, invest in and ensure everyone has access to equality, inclusion, education, homes and hospitals and build peace, and people will be glad to live in their own homes. With the EU closing doors, there are no safe or legal routes for refugees, and they are forced into the hands of unscrupulous smugglers and traffickers who charge them enormous sums of money for travel by unsafe and unreliable means. Every day, people Myriads of people set out to cross whatever barrier is in their way to find a better life. And when people are deprived of their homes, their families and familiar surroundings, they will be grateful for a welcome and hospitality and safety. And as we were told yesterday by one of the speakers, they'll be glad of a, a, a greeting with a smile and unconditional love and kindness. People flee because their lives are in danger by injustice, the injustice of war, the injustice of poverty, the injustice of persecution and hunger and pollution. Their plea is well expressed by that woman in the story from the New Testament. Grant me justice. This is the plea and the prayer of those who suffer injustice. And God's primary requirement is justice. God's very first instruction to people in the Bible is justice and righteousness. 
and they are linked as the way God has revealed for doing what is right and just. This is what brings the completion of the will of God. Fairness and impartiality in the rule of law and the sharing of benefits of belonging together is what is held together here. Justice in law, justice in love. That's the constant thread in the Bible. And in the words of Isaiah, God is laying a foundation stone and will make justice the line by which we shall measure everything. And Jesus understood and practiced this tradition. So, we can all be part of this movement to make life better for all people. So what can we do? Well, all people are human beings with names, stories, and deep relationships. All want empathy more than sympathy, respect more than pity. We have fantastic opportunities in our multi-ethnic and plural societies to meet with each other, to eat with each other, to share our stories, to, di to discover our interconnectedness, and to link the local with the global. We saw that going on in our room here yesterday in that remarkable City of Sanctuary event. We belong to each other, and as the old Celtic proverb says, it is in the shelter of each other that the people shall live. We want the best for ourselves, all of us. Well, we can work together to ensure the best for everyone. And I have seen great examples of building sanctuary here in Sheffield. How we relate to each other, and in particular to people seeking sanctuary and safety, will be central to humanity. How we will treat those who are in the greatest need for safety will be the measure by which we shall judge personal, national, and international morality and spirituality. You will not be found wanting because of all that you are and all that you do. You are amazing people. Become a church of sanctuary. Give a lead to others. And Wales, Commissioner, you can give a lead to others as a nation of sanctuary. That's where we have to go. Let's get there. And thank you all for all that you do. Uh, you're a real blessing. And thank you for all your commitment and prayer and all the strength of God to you. Thank you. Amen. Yeah.